Hi everybody, thanks for joining me here today. We're going to talk about RPG and RDI really just from the last five years perspective. IBM has made considerable upgrades and improvements to both the RPG language and RDI in general and they really are getting better all the time. If you look back from 2013 and prior to that there have been some good things added to the language. Certainly RPG Open Access was a huge improvement with the ability to add a handle a keyword and that really has opened the ground to modernizing GUIs on many applications so that that was a huge thing but that was prior to 2013 and also before then XML into there have been a lot of changes to XML into as XML itself the parsing has uh, grown over the years and as you can see in the rest of the things here, sort A has had some significant enhancements. And of course, new scan replace function, which was very helpful to a lot of people. And all along the way, RDI has kept pace in lockstep with the changes to RPG. But what I've found is over the last five years, I have seen some really significant changes to both RPG and RDI. And I want to go through them with you and demonstrate what they are. So the first one is just full, fully free from RPG, which is, in my opinion, was a dramatic change to the language. We, that was when we completely freed up the language from the fixed formats, as you, if you recall, the H, the F, the D, and the P specs went completely free form. And that's now, it's hard to believe it, that's five years already, but that has made, again, a significant change to the language. And it's opened the door to many other developers to come into the fold, onto the platform, and really embrace the language. And this was really a big change. As we go up the timeline here, as you can see in 2014, they've added an alias support, which may sound trivial, but it really isn't, because that's really given us the ability to use the alias names from database tables as field names in our programs. And I'm going to show you now how that works and why you may want to do that, take advantage of that. In my example here, you can see that I'm creating a table in library WebLib2. The name of the table is Customast. You can also see that in the first seven or eight fields or columns, I have extended names or aliases for these fields, Ccomp, Ccustno, they became company number, customer number, customer, much more meaningful. And then these last three fields here are just generic fields, year-to-date sales, year-to-date sales B, ABC, that's the current and the prior two years. But you can see how more meaningful these, these long field names are. We never were able to use those field names in RPG until now. And here is the code using the alias keyword. You can see I have a file being defined here called custmast. Here it is over here. There's a simple rename of the record format, no big deal over here. And there's that alias keyword at the end. So what that does, that's a, that compiler directive instructs the compiler to now use the alias names or the alternate names if they are defined. And it's important to point out that if you do have an alias or alternate name defined, it, that's the name you must use. You, can, you cannot use both. So here I have screen, that's from screen field, screen comp, screen comp equals company number, which is the alias name, screen cust, the customer name, same thing. But in this particular case, they, that cryptic year to date field is still being used as the cryptic field because I don't have an alias defined for that. So it's a nice feature. And again, another step towards modernizing your code. Very helpful. In 2015, IBM added star star free support to RPG. And again, yet another significant change. What this has done, of course, is it, it completely removed the column restrictions to the language, which was which is really unusual. No other language that I've ever learned ever had column restrictions as RPG did. So that was quite interesting. Now your code can literally start in column one and go well past column 80 it can go right to the end of the record 
length of your source physical file, which is really a big improvement. Still only one statement per line, but you can have, you don't have to really start abbreviating if you have a lot of concatenation, for example. That's where I've, I've seen some of the biggest benefit from this. Now we're getting into the more recent enhancements to the language on exit. This just came out late in 2016. What this feature lets you do, as you're going to see in the demo in a minute, is on exit is a new way to code a procedure. When you specify on exit, the system will always go to what you have coded in the on exit, regardless if your procedure ends with an error, without an error, or if the job itself is even canceled, the on exit will get executed, which is really a, a nice way to do housekeeping, cleaning up work files, things like that, freeing up memory if, you have, if you're using that type of uh, coding technique, etc. But it's an interesting thing. It really allows for a lot of how good housekeeping. This snippet of code was taken right from the IBM website on RPG Cafe. There are two things happening here in this snippet. The first one is that I have star star free in the top line. That's a compiler directive. Here it is right here. And what that does again is that removes the column boundaries so I can code left of column 7 or column 6 and code well beyond column 80. Even though I don't have it here, it's very helpful if you have like a, a long string concatenation. So I like using that. We use it a lot in our shops. The second thing here is the on exit. I have a procedure here defined called my proc. Here it is. And here's some code right in here. When this procedure is executed, it will always, because I have on exit specified here, this route, this portion will always also get executed. And depending on what I want to do, depending on how the procedure runs. So what I'm saying here is here's some normal housekeeping. It's deleting some temp files, but there's also an optional indicator specified here is abnormal return. And what what happens is if this procedure ends normally, this will come in with a four, uh, with a zero, which is which means no error occurred or nothing abnormal happened. If it comes in with true or a one, this will be this will be set, and then I can test for that as you can see right here. And when I do have a problem, abnormal return, as you can see right here, it, it then will report a problem. So that's on exit. One feature of procedures that we expect to be using a lot more in future development. And now the final change that I consider very big is within RDI and it's a new feature called code refactoring and this literally is a month or two old. It was just announced in December. This now lets you look at your code in a whole different way because it actually refactors it and you're going to see in my little demo here exactly what this means but code refactoring IBM has taken a position to really help us modernize our code and you're going to see how this works so here we go in this program you can see I have many 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 sub procedures and they're all listed right here in the outline view in each of these sub procedures I have a local variable called error and you can see it right there Let's say for some reason I wanted to rename this one local variable and this one sub procedure to something else. Well, if I just did a generic find and replace, it would replace every instance and in every in every sub procedure and anywhere and, and globally wherever it happens to exist. With refactoring, RDI now understands the actual constructs of the language. So watch this here. I'm going to position on this field called error or variable called error, double click on it. Now I'll right click on it and now a menu pops up, refactor, which is a new menu option. This came out with 951 of RDI. Say rename. It's going to analyze my source and here's my rename window. Let's say for now I say update error, just to give it a different name for update for update event in the procedure. Preview. If there were errors, it would identify the errors. In this case, it just found nine references. It is a confirmation window. I'll now say continue. And here is a comparison. And you can see what RDI is showing me here is every instance of where the field error will be renamed to update error. And exactly how it's going to look in the source code like this. And this is a phenomenal 
change to what RPDI can now do. Think about how this can help modernize your code. You can get rid of redundant names, uh, make them much more meaningful. And when I say OK, it's going to replace just in my one procedure. I didn't have to do anything special, but just by refactoring. This is a brand new feature, one I highly recommend you read about. Go to the RDI Developer Hub and you'll learn more about this. This is a new direction where they're going with RDI. And uh, you'll see on the IBM website that there are there's more things that they're going to be looking at and refactoring. It's really a very exciting change to RDI. I'm really glad it's here and we'll be using it certainly a lot in the future. Just to tell you where I've gotten this information from, you, you should really take a look at the RPG Cafe. There's a lot of good information on the RPG Cafe, and that's where you'll be able to read new articles about on exit and anything that's been done to RPG in the last several years. And finally, the RDI Developer Hub is a great resource where I always go to learn what's coming up in RDI, what's, what's just announced, and uh, yet another great resource. And that's it. So thank you very much. I'm glad you were here to uh, share some time with me, a little bit of time. Hope you enjoyed the presentation with some of the live demos. And hope to see you again down the road. Thank you, everybody. Bye now.